future spacecraft propulsion systems, enabling technologies for space exploration, second edition. Paul Stiz and Claudio Bruno. I found this part here that talked about status of open magnetic field configuration research in Appendix B. And I told you guys I was going to read it and I was going to come back. Well, here we are, chat. Here we are right now. B3.2, mirror configurations. Ooh, mirror configurations? Let me just spoil it for you right now. It's just as spicy as it sounds. If you have not been watching my content, I don't blame you. The reason why people are excited when we see mirror configurations is because I just did a really long live stream talking about how we're using producing relativistic free electron lasers using plasma mirrors. Yes, you can literally, why it was like last week, last week, did a whole live stream about free electron X-ray plasma lasers that uh, use relativistic motion uh, and and plasma and plasma itself as a mirror to amplify energy. And here we are in the appendix of Paul Sizz's book, and one of the chapters is on mirror configurations. And then right after that, field reversed configurations. Wow. <laughs> Field reverse configurations chat is basically finding the secret buzzword. Whenever you see the words field reverse configuration in a textbook scientific paper, especially it was from like the 90s or 2000s, take a hard look at it. Because right after that is Spheromax. Okay, well, let's go take a read. Okay, uh, 523, I think was the page. Oh, whoa, uh, that was not right. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> We're going to have a little bit of hard reading here, chat. Status of open magnetic field configuration research. It was shown in order to achieve large specific power, it is necessary to use the largest possible extent fusion in the form of direct propulsion with the possibility of direct electricity conversion. <laughs> OMG chat, you have no idea. I got goosebumps when I read this. I got goosebumps when I read it, chat. I am now an A neutronic fusion zero point energy influencer. And in the first sentence right there, it says direct energy conversion. The reason why this is significant is direct energy conversion is the holy grail of fusion research. That's what A neutronic fusion research is. A neutronic fusion research is literally direct energy conversion. He mentions it in the first paragraph, the very first sentence. So basically what he's saying here is if we want to be able to achieve propulsion using plasma fusion, we need to be doing a neutronic. The reason is we need higher efficiency. Neutronic fusion is not efficient enough. We lose like 60% of the energy in the form of heat. We need to get, we go from like 30% efficiency with neutronic fusion to like 90% or higher with a neutronic fusion. No wonder the scientific papers and the DIRDs talk about a neutronic fusion propulsion. This is why. There you go. So you've already learned something very important tonight and we only got one paragraph in. This is not easy to achieve, referring to direct energy conversion. This is not easy to achieve in equilibrium configurations such as conventional tokamaks, where plasma does not escape from the reaction chamber, but could be achieved by open magnetic field configurations. I don't even know if we're going to make it through this because I am so excited when I listen to this. Keep in mind, guys, I had never read this before yesterday. Never had read this before yesterday, and it's saying everything that I've been saying for months on end, which shouldn't be a surprise. My research literally comes from people like Paul Sizz, Hal Pudoff, Eric Davis, the Durds, etc. It shouldn't be a surprise, but it's nice to be vindicated once again. So here he is saying that you tokamaks are going to fail. 
The reason why tokamaks are going to fail is they're not using open magnetic fields. The plasma cannot escape. So what do they mean by that? Our tokamak is just a donut, but it's metally, it's encased all the way around. So there's nowhere for exhaust to go out. There's nowhere for plasma to escape. If you want to create plasma for propulsion purposes, you need to have there be an exhaust. Sound familiar, chat? Does it sound like some orbs you saw spinning around an airplane? Okay. <clears throat> the topology of open magnetic field configurations may vary. Mirror's topology is cylindrical, but field reverse configuration sphere max transitioning to a torus in the confinement region may be viable. Nevertheless, the common feature of open magnetic field configurations is that the magnetic field lines escape from the plasma confinement zone without intercepting any wall. And such a feature enables using plasma fusion plasma both for direct propulsion and direct energy conversion. Note that such a feature may also be common to other systems, such as the very low aspect ratio spherical tokamak, not considered here, but already proposed for propulsion applications. My goodness, chat. <laughs> so he says uh, that what we need to make this happen is we need the plasma to not be running in to our wall reactor. So the why, God, this is just so crazy, man. Why is it that the tokamaks won't work? Because the plasma is going to hit the wall reactor. It's going to destroy the wall. It's going to destroy the reactor itself. That's what happens with the neutrons. The neutrons literally destroy the reactors. So what he's saying here is, what's the answer for that? Don't have there be a wall. Let the plasma just go out into the open and have the magnetic field confine the plasma itself. To me, that's that's proof. To me, that's proof, guys. I mean, I don't want to be one of these people that's jumping to conclusions, but I'm literally staring at three plasma orbs here in this video that are clearly showing open magnetic field configurations. I didn't know anything about science or anything about military surveillance or anything about plasma, and I could still tell that what I was looking at in these videos was plasma that was freely connected to the, to, to the air. And then what we're looking at here is a magnetic field that is confining the plasma. That's called an open magnetic field configuration. Just like what Paul just says, just said in this textbook. That's what you're looking at in these videos. So when people say, oh, it's the aliens zap the plane, there's no aliens in this video. We're looking at the thermal video of the zap right here, of the three orbs spinning around it. You can clearly see the non-equilibrium heat signature. When I say non-equilibrium, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, why are you seeing a green heat signature, green-yellow heat signature in the center of these orbs? The reason why you see the heat signature is because it's non-equilibrium. If it was an in equilibrium, the whole heat signature would be uniform. The heat signature of the entire orb would be the same. The fact that you see the heat signature is not uniform means that this thing is most likely a non-equilibrium plasma, meaning that the electrons and the ions are being held out of equilibrium from one another. When they want to come back together, they're not being allowed. Okay, now that we understand that, <clears throat> let's keep going. The best plasma performance achieved so far has been obtained in closed magnetic field configurations, specifically in tokamaks. However, for propulsion, open magnetic field configurations have intrinsic advantages. Number one, easy steady state operation. Two, natural particle exhaust. We kept wondering, why are we seeing these black lines coming out of these plasma balls? Why would you need black lines coming out of your magic alien plasma ball? Because there's nothing alien about it. You're literally seeing the exhaust from the fusion reactor. They're using a neutronic fusion as propulsion. And you're seeing the exhaust. And the exhaust is not standard exhaust. The exhaust in this case is like x-rays coming out from the fusion reaction that can't be contained. 
high beta value. Does that sound familiar at all to you guys? Look at this one. High beta equal, which is thermal pressure divided by magnetic pressure. So what we're saying here is that the plasma wants to dissipate. The plasma wants to spread out. The plasma wants to equal go back to equilibrium. But the high beta value keeps it confined. The high beta value is the magnetic field strength that is keeping it confined. The high beta value is basically like saying, this is how we're able to make it turn into a sphere. Because the magnetic field strength is so powerful, the plasma tries to escape and then it gets caught in the magnetic field and, and, and comes back around. Pretty neat. Simple design, direct conversion of fusion power into thrust. That's direct energy conversion. And then we can we are going to configure uh, consider three configurations: open-ended systems such as mirrors, closed field line systems such as field reverse configurations and sphere max, and then levitated dipoles.